right, thank you so much, everybody, for coming out today. Um, my job here really is just to give thanks and appreciation. Um, I want to start with uh, this wasn't our idea to do a grand reopening of the Community Resource Center. Uh, this idea came from a guest who I was spending some time in the parking lot, and his guest said to me, well, if you've done all these great renovations, why not get everybody together and why not do a grand opening? And I was delighted this morning because I got a text on my phone from Brenner, a community outreach uh, worker, and his guest who uh, had the idea to renovate, uh, the, to have a... Um, this event for the grand reopening uh, just uh, received housing and a housing voucher and is moving in today to an apartment with the Champlain Housing Trust. I'm feeling very close to these days. Uh, so it's great news because this person was living outside for a really long time. And that's like an example of the work we do and the work we can do when we all work together. So deep appreciation uh, for the tip from our guests to actually do this reopening. I also want to take a moment to appreciate all the guests that come to the Community Resource Center. The right. room. This is really, really important. They are valuable and important members of our community, and we will never forget them. We will always serve them, and this is their permanent home. We had a time where this resource center came and went. Sarah knows this. Marcella knows this. We were in different locations. Uh, now we're here at Feeding Chittenden, soon to be Feeding Champlain, and it is a permanent community resource center for people who are unsheltered, experiencing homelessness, and other members of the community. And that's what we do, right? We build community. So I want to thank our community resource center team, um, Brenna, Todd, Adam, Ryan, everybody, there's a few of them. They provide incredible services all day long here, housing advocate services and a whole wide range of other services. I want to really thank our Feeding Chittenden team. Uh, the Feeding Chittenden team provides incredible meals here every single day. And I especially want to thank our Feeding Chittenden and Soon to be Feeding Champlain Valley Director Rob Mann, because when we were moving around trying to find a place for people, Rob said, yeah, why don't you come on over to Feeding Chittenden? So to do that, we renovated the space, but in renovating the space, we displaced all our staff folks so we could serve more people in the community. So they've been working off-site. Um, and they've kind of sacrificed a lot. So our goal in the next phase is to build a second floor. And the second floor will serve as office space, conference room space, and meeting space. So we'd appreciate any of your support around that capital campaign. So thank you. I also um, want to thank Tom Fontaine, Green City Builders, who's done a great job. Tom has been working closely with CHT, uh, Champlain Housing Trust, not only on this building, but he's working at the Samaritan House, our other shelter in Franklin County, to do renovations. And we recently took on the Champlain and Emergency Shelter, and Tom is going to be doing that work as well. So thank you so much, Tom, uh, for everything. And I've got a host of different people that I deeply want to thank. Um, the mayor, Mayor Weinberger, has been so incredibly supportive of CVOEO, our work around homelessness, and our broader work. We have a lot of different programs. We feel backed up, we feel supported, we feel the compassion, we feel the energy, and it's the mayor, and it's the mayor's office, and it's Sarah Russell, the special assistant then homelessness, and Marcella, who is not here, and Brian, who have done everything to support CVOE. Oh, so this has been really, really valuable Brian, partnership and a relationship. Um, so thank you so much, Mayor. And uh, I think in terms of thanks, I just want to mention, I'll introduce Michael in a second. We had a really special relationship with the Champlain Housing Trust. I just meant to mention this place, the Samaritan House, the Champlain Inn. We work so closely together, uh, and we couldn't appreciate our partners more, uh, absolutely, than um, Michael, Chris, and the whole team at the Champlain Housing Trust. And I want to thank members of our congressional delegation for coming. I'll introduce them shortly. Sorry to talk so long. Without further ado,
thank you for that. You know, more importantly, thank you for uh, for your incredible work in the community. I do feel like we are in a period now where the challenges that we are facing mean that uh, our organizations are working very closely together on, on a number of fronts. We're cities. Grateful for the partnership over at the Elmwood Avenue shelter. We're grateful for the new about to launch partnership down uh, on Shelburne Avenue uh, as you take over the management of what has been the um, a new place shelter there. And we are very thankful that uh, we can announce the, the reopening of, of this uh, resource center today. Um, you know, this the community resource center is uh, is still a relatively new um, addition to this community. It's something that really came about uh, as a result of the pandemic and the uh, some the initial emergency steps the the city and partners took during the pandemic. Um, we have been uh, proud to be a, a funder of early efforts here, both through the use of ARPA funds, and then very importantly, uh, Senator Leahy congressionally directed um, uh, spending. I guess I can't quite look at you guys on the, the Leahy front anymore, but I know you're continuing on uh, continuing on that work. Um, the uh, we are also excited about the talk of, you know, not more than the talk, but the, the plans for future expansion. The city has been supportive of that for years through our community development block grant funding, and uh, we really look forward to, to that happening. Um, You know, I, I think uh, we should just be very clear that what the, the work that the C, CBOEO, the Feeding Chittenden is doing right now here in this building and elsewhere in the community, given the circumstances that we're facing, is critical, life-saving work. There is a just tremendous need right now as a result of the combination of very challenging fa factors of economic factors as we come out of the pandemic, the incredible shortage of housing that we're facing now and the related uh, unprecedented number of people who are living unsheltered in this community and a drug crisis that as bad as we thought it was uh, last decade is, is worse than ever. These are cr tremendous pressures. Uh, we see the strain of these pressures all around us every day. Um, we would be feeling them far worse, and we would be, have a far more dire situation on our hands uh, if we did not have CVOEO, Feeding Chittenden, CHT, and other critical partners stepping up, meeting this need, committed to making sure that we do right by everyone in our community, and uh, that's what the Community Resource Center is really about. The city is is proud to be a supporter of it, and we're going to continue to be uh, a strong partner to you going forward in this and, and around the city. Thanks. Michael Monte needs no introduction. I just want to really thank Michael uh, and all of CHT for an incredible partnership over the years. It it takes all of us to come together to solve homelessness, and Michael's been just a tremendous partner. So thank you, Michael. Uh, so I'll just be very brief. I did prepare some remarks. Um, 30 years ago, uh, we partnered with CVOEO and, and developed the emergency food shelf at this location. Uh, the city of Burlington actually provided a bond to underwrite that, and a fundraising campaign happened in the community which built the relief buildings, which include this building, legal aid and what was the CHC headquarters and Cotts Way Station, Cotts headquarters down on South Winooski Avenue. Great effort. It's good to see that 30 years ago, 30 years today, we're still doing that kind of work and that we continue that work and the support that we're doing uh, in this community. On a personal note, I was the lead developer of this building. So when um, I was given a tour and said, have you seen this lately? I said, yeah, I think I was helping when they poured the foundations on this one. So um, it's great to see this building, uh, as small as it is as a facility, continue to transition and do the work that it is doing in the community. Uh, so we're proud to be a partner in this now for uh, decades and hopefully for decades to come. Um, uh, it is a part of our mission to support the development of community faci facilities, such as this one, for feeding Champlain, uh, and we'll continue to do that. Um, we want to we renew. We want to today. We want to continue to renew this partnership in the development of this resource center. Looking forward to the next phases. I want to thank the contractors who we can't do anything without. Great contractors, 
out there, Donald Dugan and our staff, who led, led the development and their work. We're humbled and proud to be a part of this. Let me say, we're CVOEO and O, we're not getting married, but we're dating heavily. <laughs> We've got a lot of work together, and it's all good work. So thank you very much, Paul, for letting me be a part of this. Thanks so much, Michael. And of course, it takes partnerships on all levels, right? At the community, the nonprofit level, at the city level, the state level. And what would we do without our congressional delegation? We have the most amazing uh, congressional delegation and staff in the, in the country. So Earhart, thank you for all you've done for us. And please come on up. Thanks, Paul. And uh, Michael, thanks for reminding us about the relief campaign. That was a real path-breaking uh, campaign back in the early 90s. And part of that campaign uh, really uh, brings us to, to what we see today here on, uh, on North Winooski Avenue. It was an entire effort to redevelop this, this neighborhood, which had long uh, needed redevelopment. And the nonprofits like CVOEO and, um, and the, the Food Shelf, really, and Legal Aid were anchors uh, for, for that. So uh, thanks for reminding us about that. Um, I cut my 10 pages of uh, remarks down to just a couple here, um, but let me just say thank you uh, for having me here today on behalf of uh, Senator Sanders. I uh, want to congratulate and thank Paul and the CDOEO team, uh, Michael and uh, Champlain Housing Trust team for uh, their partnership in this, and of course uh, the mayor and the, the CEDO team that's, uh, that administers community development block grant dollars, which uh, are what has helped make uh, this important expansion possible. Um, I, on Bernie's behalf, I really want to thank everyone here today, because uh, I know all of you do um, different things to help alleviate poverty in our community and to help uh, alleviate homelessness and to help uh, bring people um, into feeling part of the community, which is what everybody really needs. They need opportunity, they need housing, they need food, they need their basic needs met, but everyone also needs a community to be part of, to, uh, to, to thrive. So thank you for all of uh, all of the work that you're doing. Um, having grown up in a, a family that uh, struggled financially, uh, Senator Sanders understands full well the toll um, that economic hardship can take and the importance of meeting people's needs. In a country that is the richest in the history of the world, it is absolutely unacceptable that close to 600,000 people are sleeping homeless on our streets in our country uh, every year. Uh, in Vermont, we have 3,295 folks who were counted last year as part of the point in time count uh, on census on homelessness uh, that were living either in motels, in encampments, um, or in other places unfit for human habitation, including um, over 650 children. I mean, think about that. 650 kids living without a place to call home Every, every night. It's just an absolute tragedy and it's completely unacceptable to, uh, to my boss. Um, it's unacceptable that we have more people living with food insecurity and reliant on SNAP benefits than ever before. All these are reasons why the Senator fights every day to make sure that federal funding, which is helping make this ex important expansion possible, to help bring federal funding to Burlington and to Vermont communities to help make these kinds of resources available uh, for Vermonters, especially Vermonters who are vulnerable and experiencing hardship. This is why the Senator is fighting hard to make sure that the government does not shut down at the end of this month. The federal government shutdown would be an absolute catastrophe for this country, and it is something that Bernie is fighting uh, every day to, to prevent. One of the things that uh, the Senator has been proud with Senator Leahy and uh, now Senator Welch and uh, uh, Congresswoman Ballant um, to bring back and engage in is community-directed spending. That's the new title for earmarks. And we're also pleased uh, that the Senator uh, nominated phase two of this project uh, for one of his congressionally-directed spending uh, awards. Uh, it would be a $1.5 million contribution to phase two. Um, and we're We've got our fingers crossed. We don't know. It's made an important um, uh, hurdle by uh, being included in the Senate's budget. Uh, however, the Senate's budget still needs to be reconciled with the House. Uh, we don't know exactly where that's going to end up, especially with a looming, potential looming government shutdown. Um, but we've got our fingers crossed that it'll make it through uh, to the 
finish line and uh, hope to be here to help celebrate the beginning of phase two uh, at some point in the very near future. So thanks again for having me today and congratulations to everyone. So much, Earhart. Um, you know, part of the transformation from feeding Chittenden to feeding the Champlain Valley is to really get food out to where people are at through all four counties, Addison, Chittenden, Franklin, and Grand Isle County. Our feeding Chittenden staff, I see Rob, Midhat, and Anna, have really led that charge. We know right now that um, rates of food insecurity among children and adults in Vermont are higher than the rest of the country. So one of the first things we started to do, Rob and his team started to do, was where can we create food hubs? We had James come up and visit Colchester, the warehouse uh, there, and talked about the importance of a food hub uh, expansion. We've got one in Middlebury, we're developing one in Sheldon, but we've got community-directed uh, spending for that food hub in Colchester from Senator Welch through James's work and connections, and we so, so appreciate that. We have to alleviate hunger in this state. Well, yes, th thank you, Paul, for the uh, introduction and um, everyone else for your remarks so far. Um, my name is James McNerney. I'm Constituent Services and Outreach Representative uh, in Senator Welch's office. Um, Obviously, the senator is uh, stuck in D.C. at the moment and sends his regrets that he wasn't able to be here, but asks that uh, on his behalf that I offer his uh, congratulations uh, to CVOEO uh, and the whole team uh, for the completion of this uh, really incredible uh, uh, renovation project here. Um, and, and how needed and necessary it is right now. Um, you know, while we all come to terms with the post-pandemic reality, I think the truth is for so many Vermonters, uh, things are more precarious now than ever. Uh, from finding access to affordable housing to accessing healthy and nutritious food options to uh, staying warm during the uh, quickly uh, approaching cold winter months, um, all of those things are absolutely vital. And our communities have a partner that is really uh, second to none uh, here in CBOEO. Uh, so as these needs continue to grow, so must our, our capacity and our, our creativity and our desire to solve these sorts of problems that, uh, uh, that we're facing. Uh, and, and, and all of those qualities are, are really on display here today with the completion of this expansion project and its future iterations. Uh, and they've been on display at uh, nearly every CVOEO event that I've been to, including the Champlain Street uh, Park Cleanup Sponsorship and, uh, and the, the Food Hub that Paul mentioned here just a minute ago. Uh, and, and those are really, uh, those qualities and successes that have resulted are really a testament to the leadership that we have at CVOEO, at Feeding Chittenden, uh, certainly from the mayor and his office, the city of Burlington, and from CHT as well. Uh, so. The Senator uh, certainly uh, remains steadfast in his commitment to advocate for programs that protect and support our most vulnerable communities in Vermont, and I know the inspiration that he takes from your leadership is uh, something that will be very needed as he continues to fight the good fight in D.C. So on behalf of the Senator, congratulations on the completion of this project. Congratulations to Paul and the CVOEO team. Uh, special thanks to Mayor Weinberger, the City of Burlington, to CHT for their partnership, and we await with excitement uh, future developments to come. Thank you. Thank you so much, James. Um, and you know, we're so lucky in our delegation and we're so blessed to find out that uh, Congresswoman Bowen was joining the delegation. She's always been a great friend for social justice and human rights. David, I'd like you to come up on and speak, and thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Paul. My name is David Scherer, here on behalf of Congresswoman Bowen. She's very sorry she couldn't be here today. Uh, the main message she wanted me to pass along was a message of thanks and gratitude for the extraordinary, extraordinary work of CVOEO and CHT. Uh, the work that you all do is so vital and important, as the mayor mentioned. Uh, it, it's always important, but we are dealing in a moment right now where these types of services and the hard work you do on the ground is just so essential and important and is only becoming more so. So thank you very much for all that you do. Um, as Earhart also mentioned, the you know this, this type of event, this type of thing, uh, requires congressional funding very often to get done. It did in this case. Um, I would be remiss not to note that the Congresswoman is in the middle of a battle down in the U.S. House right now just to get any budget passed through that body. And 
the work that you do here, what this new phase of construction represents for the services for the community is an illustration of how vital it is that uh, we get behind a normal, rational federal budgeting process that allows for these types of vital services to continue. And the Congresswoman just is so grateful for what you do and notes that it is things like this that are at stake in the work that uh, she's having to engage in down there. So thank you for everything. Uh, I'll keep my remarks brief. It's hot in the sun, which none of us are used to after this summer. So thank you all. Thanks so much, David. Uh, so I didn't introduce myself. I was told to introduce myself. Paul Dragon, I'm the executive director of CBOEO. Thanks again for coming. I do want to say if you want follow-up, you're invited to take pictures inside. Uh, if there's guests here, please ask for permission. We've got an amazing outreach team. So when I see a few, two, few of them here, uh, Adam, Todd, Brenna, Ryan, you can ask them questions about what the work feels like. If you have questions about the food service, I talked to Midhat. If you have questions about the uh, expansion from feeding Chittenden to feeding Champlain Valley, talk to Rob Meehan, he knows it all, or Anna. And um, also I just really want to deeply thank our uh, communications team. They do such a good job of always putting this together. It's a lot more work than maybe it looks like. Jason, Addy, Taylor, and others, thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, that concludes the day, and uh, thanks to our friends in the media for highlighting this important issue. Thank you. I think, of course, we would take some questions as well if there are from the media. I did just want to, uh, um, something I meant to mention, I don't think any of us have quite uh, maybe someone else mentioned it, but I think it's important for everyone here to know that the scale of the impact that this community resource center is having, um, there have been just in the in the past year, my understanding, 2,300 individuals who have been served by the community resource center, and that's over 25,000 separate visits. So it's, uh, you know, it, it is a small place. We're hoping to expand it, but even in the in its current form, um, what is happening in here, uh, both with the meals programs as well as the resource center, is just an enormous amount of impact. And uh, I want to echo my thanks to the CVOEO team making that, that possible. And uh, I do want to, I appreciate that a couple other people mentioned as well, but the, the CEDO team, Sarah Russell, special assistant in homelessness, uh, we created this position uh, knowing that we were facing a challenging period and very grateful for, for you and the whole team under Brian Pines. Uh, leadership uh, are, are doing. So, thanks. Questions if there are any. Um, this is Paul, but can you just talk about what was done in here for phase one? Yeah, thank you. And thanks to the mayor for picking up the slack. I didn't, I, I missed the data. There's an enormous amount of work going on here, and I can see Marcella maybe rolling her eyes because Marcella's kept us on track with the data. The work that's been done here, um, it's <laughs> It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, it was a much smaller place. You'll see that when you come in. There was a, a wall shelving and there was a small office there. We removed all that. We uh, redid the walls and painted them, redid the floors. Um, we are also uh, teaching a, a, a culinary kitchen academy. So there's a gate that will come down. So um, the students and our chef, John, can teach in there with some quiet. We put in new heating and cooling system. There wasn't a cooling system before. It's an efficient system. And we have tables set up. We can sit about 50 people. Um, and there's some more touch-ups that's, that's going to be happening as well. But it's a, it's a great expansion. Um, and, and again, we are looking for that second floor so we can bring our staff back in and, and have them work out of this site. Currently, you're serving about 125 people per day. Do you expect that this expansion will bring in more people or be able to host more people in a day? Yeah, I, I, that is a really great question. Um, so we have meal service beginning at 9 and it goes through 11. Hot meals, nutritious meals, um, culturally appropriate foods some of the times, uh, really, really important. We're actually seeing around uh, 140 people a day. I think our top has been... Uh, 185. We've probably averaged around 125 over the past year. Uh, I'll let you talk to Adam and the team afterwards. We haven't turned anybody away. So I don't, this place is small. You'll see that. 
Um, I don't think we've had to ask people to leave so somebody can sit yet because of the way it runs. But that may, you know, need to happen at some point. Um, and we also do a lot of to-go meals to people. And I just want to say Feeding Chittenden does to-go meals like all around the county. And they've started meal service at the Champlain Inn Emergency Shelter. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Our staff's here if you want to ask questions.